Okay, 6.45, I'd like to call the Committee of the Whole meeting to order at this time. Are there any suspensions this evening, Mayor? Yes. Uh, yes, Madam President, uh, we are requesting suspension on one item. It is uh, Resolution 22-15. Uh, the City of Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department uh, is would like to apply for a grant uh, from the Seneca County um, uh, Park District. And uh, by doing so, they need a resolution that you all support them applying for the grant. Um, it would be utilized for the all-inclusive playground. Uh, and that if we obtain the grant, it would allow us to enclose the entire playground in, uh, in, in some very nice uh, powder coated black fencing. Uh, by doing so, it's very good for uh, kids uh, who, who may have either sensory issues or maybe autistic uh, or just children in general that are prone to running, but some of those uh, um, uh, issues like autism and other things, one of the, the side effects can be at times that they, they will take off running. And uh, it can be quite difficult for a, a parent uh, who may have a couple of kids there to try to keep track of everything. So this would allow the entire playground to be fenced in uh, in a very nice attractive fencing manner versus just your plain chain link fence. Um, so they would like to have this done. However, they need it by the end of the month to apply for the grant. Um, so uh, we would really like council to consider suspending and passing that under emergency this evening, just so that uh, we, we can get that grant submitted. Thank you. Who, who uh, signed that? Thank you, Steve. Okay. Any questions on that? Right. You're good. Okay. And then the only other thing, Madam President, is just the reminder that ordinance or resolution 2214 is just a one reading. One reading. Yep. Yep. Thank you. And Danny, that was you, I imagine. Okay. Hey, Ben. Okay. Any other suspensions this evening? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, no, oh, yes. Councilman Gillick. Thank you, Madam President. Would you mind telling me what uh, has been asked to be suspended? Yes, resolution 22-15 is asking to be suspended uh, due to the Parks and Rec um, <clears throat> team applying for a grant for the park from the Park District, and they need that. Uh, it's asking to be suspended because uh, they need to apply for it by the end of the month. So very time sensitive. Yeah. Um, did, did I sign that, may I ask? Uh, no, uh, Councilman Leopard. Perfect. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, I think I think the other thing that we want to talk while we have some time is about um, what we want to do for next meeting. And obviously, we can formally vote on we'll formally vote on this during the regular Tiffin City Council meeting. But uh, Don, I know you had raised. Um, just an update of where your your status of things are as far as you being able to attend in person or not. And uh, again, while we had some time, we'd love to get everyone's thoughts um, and feedback um, about what we want to do for next meeting. Um, the mayor has noted that I think May 16th, we're really trying to be, um, be in person for that meeting. Um, but again, really just wanted to open this up to the group um, given where we're at with um, the status of some of our council members. Does anyone have any thoughts? Yes, Councilman Perry. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. Um, it's always my preference to, um, to meet in person, um, but I obviously get, uh, you know, the other council members have, you know, circumstances going on outside of their control. Um, and I think the, um, the real importance is to have uh, more people here uh, than to meet in person at this current moment. Um, but going forward, I'd love to get a path uh, where we can get back in, in person every, you know, to our normal meetings. Councilman Jones. Thank you, Madam President. My current situation in the state of Virginia is looking up. And again, my wife being retired nurse, she said, don't put a time frame on any, anything. It gets people's hopes up. So uh, today's the 18th. Uh, we're hoping to get some more good information. So on my personal 
preference, I would suggest we have Zoom meeting at least one more time. And that way I'll be able to uh, guarantee that I can join in. So other than that, I can't guarantee I will be face to face. That's my input. <laughs> Councilman Gillick. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I would also be very appreciative if council would consider meeting virtually for at least the first meeting in May, if not the second. I'm still having trouble stringing too many good days together uh, in a row uh, post COVID. Um, as Councilman Perry said, I would very much love to get back into person, but, it, but it's probably better if we have more attendance um, and if we have the ability and authority to, to do it virtually for now, it, I think it'll be our best bet at least for the next meeting. Councilman Leppard. I think it's a necessity that we meet in person on the uh, May 16th meeting. Uh, I think it's imperative that we do. Uh, we could discuss that meeting where we're going to go beyond but uh, uh, the first meeting in May you know I think we can do a zoom and uh, I think it's imperative that we meet as a whole on the 16th of May and we can decide where we're going to go from there okay that's fair yeah uh, yes councilwoman Yana to know I really appreciate everybody considering doing that, and I would it would be great if we could do one more Zoom. Um, I can try to time things around the 16th to make sure it's not an issue. What, what happens for me is I'm not real mobile, and so when you think about the situation with City Hall, there's no great parking around there for somebody that can't walk very far, and I the leg tires out and almost gives out pretty quickly. And so till I get parked, get in the building, I know we have an elevator, but it's quite the journey for me. And as I told some of you earlier, um, I had, hadn't been to church in six months because I just can't move or sit. And I went yesterday to Cantor Mass and it took me forever to get up the stairs and then hard to stand there that whole time. So that's where my issues add. It's hard for me to sit and stand for long periods of time. And they are talking about possibly going back in. So I can try to time that around the 16th, but I do appreciate everybody's patience with this. I never dreamed this thing would end up like it is. I've never seen anybody else with this problem. Um, so hopefully I will get through this thing soon, but I would appreciate one more meeting if possible, and I will make sure I'm there on the 16th in person. Thank you. Appreciate the update. Uh, yes, Councilman Perkins. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Councilman Leppard. Uh, one more Zoom is fine, but past that, I think it's probably time that we go back to meet in person. Um, there's, you know, it just becomes convenient to do Zoom at some point. Um, and I understand people have some health issues and family issues and things like that going on, uh, but we need at least five. And at some point, we need to go back. Next thing you know, it's going to be July, um, you know, and then we're doing three months <coughs> for, you know, no COVID. But so, yeah, one more. I'm good with one more. Yeah, I, I think the other thing, important thing to note here is I don't think we can go past June anyways. Um, so um, really the 16th would be the last option that we would have to do Zoom. And um, as I said, I, I really would strongly recommend that we have that in person. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, but besides that, it sounds like everybody is in agreement um, or aligned, I should say, on uh, May 2nd being uh, via Zoom. And then we will hopefully um, be able to, to have May 16th in person as well. Any other comments on that? Okay. Um, does anyone else have anything for the Committee of the Whole? Yes, Councilman Perkins. Yeah, underwritten communications tonight, we have uh, Ohio Division of Liquor Control stock ownership change for Reno's Pizza. You're on mute, Councilman Perkins. I don't know how that happened. Sorry. Um, we have an owner, uh, Division of Liquor Control, uh, stock ownership change for Reno's Pizza Center under written communications. Um, is that just a transfer like via the family or, because it it's not filled out, it's only half filled out. So I'm wondering who has information on that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes, uh, law director. Yeah, um, Zach, I, I don't know for sure, um, but I would um, imagine given the, the time frame following um, a, a death in the Reno family in the last year, okay. that that probably is part of maybe settling the estate, I would assume. Now, it could be other issues, but maybe that's all it is, is that a transfer of the stock among family members. Um, I, I suppose we could inquire to uh, the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, uh, but I'm not aware of any um, uh, any transfers that uh, are um, outside the family. That's that's what I'd figured on the way it was filled out. I just wanted to verify that it wasn't going to some other party, and we just didn't see the information or anything like that um, because I wanted to ask see if anybody had any you know issues with the transfer handle being handled. So. Councilwoman Yamasuno. I actually wondered the same thing, Zach, and was going to ask that. But other than that, since I'm on that committee, I'm fine with the transfer. Okay, thank you. Anything else for the committee of the whole? I'm fine with it as well, Zach. Thank you. And just waving to me. Did you want to say something, Councilman Jones? No, I'm just going to say I have no objections to okay. um, that Reno transfer, but that's all. Okay. All right. Anything else for the committee of the whole? Okay. We will adjourn and reconvene at 7 p.m. Councilman Perkins, can you tell me about the neat artwork behind you? Those are uh, displays. So they're metal. They're like metal posters. And we have, I don't know, probably six or seven sets. And we just kind of like rotate them throughout the year. So it was getting warmer, closer to 4th of July. So we put up like our patriotic ones there. This is our, actually our dining room. Oh, wow. So we got a, uh, yeah, they're made by, I don't know, an artist made those off whatever original pictures there were. So they just magnets that go on the wall, basically. That's really neat. And is there anything special you have to do to the wall to? No, they they come with a magnet that's got an adhesive on the back that won't take your paint or anything off. And you just put that on the wall and then those are metal and they just stick right to the magnet. What a time to be alive. Right. <laughs> Would ask you about yours, Ben, but I don't think we have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came to my classroom tonight to uh, get away from my Beautiful wife and children. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. You can just talk, Councilman Jones. Okay, okay. Well, we're not being recorded, are we? Uh, yes, you are. Okay, then. I had a personal comment for uh, Law Director Howard, but I will tend to that later. Anything you can say to Brent, you can say to us. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll say That's it. true. <laughs> I have. I'm, I was in Virginia. Thanks, cleaning, Dan. Cleaning out my sister's house, and I found a recipe book from, I don't know, I think 1962 for Old Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get it to Mr. Howard, or, but I don't know where he lives. I know where he lives. Don't know his address, but I'll work that out. That's all. I just wanted to give him a heads up. Well, thank you. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll add it to the community kitchen library for recipes to be used by the community. Oh, I have I have a, a couple of those books as well. I believe I have one from the Betty Jane Center from the Bicentennial. I'd be delighted to I have some school cookbooks. Mom saved about everything. So I'd be delighted to, to donate those as well. I'm thinking, Brent, uh, you know, you get the recipe book, uh, bake some cookies, bring it to the May 16th meeting. <laughs> I'll see if Susan will help. <laughs> Regularly scheduled city council meeting in potluck. <laughs> okay, it's 7 p.m. I would like to call the Tiffin City Council meeting of April 18th, 2022 to order.
<clears throat> at this time, uh, the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Council Member Gillig. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and help to assist our friends and neighbors and look over the finances and good people of the city. We're especially grateful to do that on the day after Easter. In your son's name we pray, we pray, amen. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Gillig. Um, at this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Council Member Gillig. Here. Council Member Yanatuno. Here. Council Member Jones. Present. Council Member Leopard. Aye. Council Member Perkins. Here. Council Member Perry. Present. And Council Member Rhodes. Let the record show that six of the seven council members are present. Uh, minutes <clears throat> for April 4th, regular and committee, the whole meetings uh, were distributed. Are there, are there any corrections, questions, or deletions? Okay, seeing none, the minutes will stand approved as presented. Committee reports, Finance Committee, Council Member Gillig. No report at this time, Madam President. Okay, thank you. Long Community Planning, Councilman Leopard. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Materials and equipment, Council Member Jones. No report at this time, Madam President. Thank you. Personnel and labor, labor Relations, Council Member Perry. No report, Madam President. <clears throat> Recreation and Public Property. Anyone from that committee have a report? No report, Madam President. Thank you. Street Sidewalks and Sewers, Council Member Perkins. No report, Madam President. Thank you. And Economic Development and Downtown Planning, Council Member Yanatuna. No report, Madam President. Okay, thank you. Uh, committee of the Whole, does anyone see the need to have a Committee of the Whole meeting? Let's see. Okay, seeing none, we are now under report to the officers. His Honor Mayor Aaron D. Montz. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a couple of very quick items before we get into uh, Public Works Annual Report. Um, I, first off, I want to thank all of our, uh, our uh, national public safety telecommunicators. Uh, so that's what we call dispatchers here at the, at the local level. So last week was National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week uh, in the United States. And uh, I just want to give a thank you. I know I did on, on social media uh, to our wonderful dispatchers that we have here in the city of Tiffin. Um, they're really the unsung heroes because they're the, the first person uh, that is there on the line when you're having the time of an emergency. Um, and, and really, it's that person that very seldom do you ever get to meet uh, or, or give a thank you to when you're in a time of crisis, uh, whether it's a, a home robbery, whether it's a, a heart attack, a medical condition. Um, they're the ones there answering the phone 24 hours a day, dispatching and really talking folks through the situation uh, that, that, of course, uh, most people uh, only call 911 when it's a very serious issue. So I just want to thank all of our dispatchers, our safety telecommunicators here at the city uh, for a job well done uh, as, we, as we celebrated National Safety Telecommunicators Week last week. So thank you, dispatchers. Um, a quick financial update. Uh, hard to believe we're already more than halfway through the month of April uh, so far for the year. We are ahead of last year's numbers year to date uh, when we compare this date to last year in 2021 by about $573,000, uh, which is about an 18% increase. Uh, that, of course, uh, has a lot to do with the fact that the tax dates are still different from what they were last year. Uh, so we will hopefully, uh, somewhere in June, have a very, very good true up picture of exactly where we are financially uh, compared to last year at this time. Uh, the first part of this year is just a little different with the fact that we were still coming out of COVID last year. The deadlines were different and later in the year when uh, folks had to have income taxes done. Uh, so we don't exactly have a true picture. That's why things are skewed. We, we know we've had a pretty solid start to 2022 financially, 
Um, but I, I truthfully don't believe that we're going to see an 18% increase hold up for the entire year, uh, but we are expecting to see a revenue increase overall. Uh, we chatted a little bit about it in Committee of the Whole, but for those that joined us late uh, that may be watching from home, uh, the Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department is applying for a grant from the Seneca County Parks District. Uh, we would like to use that to fence in that beautiful new all-inclusive playground that will be structured or that will be completed later this year. Uh, the playground will cost nearly $800,000 and by fencing it in, uh, it will allow uh, uh, parents that have multiple kids to keep better watch over their children, but also knowing that the playground is all-inclusive, um, uh, kids with certain uh, uh, developmental issues and other problems uh, that will be utilizing this playground. One of the, the um, uh, one of the aspects that they deal with is at times certain children will run off. And by having this area fenced in, it's going to make lives a lot easier for parents, grandparents, guardians, et cetera, who are out there util utilizing the playground. So I would hope council uh, strongly consider suspending that this evening. The, the deadline is later this month uh, so that Bryce and Mason can apply for that grant and get a nice fence around the park. And of course, we're not going to just throw up some ugly chain link fence. We're going to make sure we do it right and put in a very nice black powder coated fence that will last a long time, zero maintenance, uh, but also look good around this uh, playground structure at Hedges Boyer Park. Speaking of that playground, I want to thank Team Kenna. They donated $1,000 to the all-inclusive playground. Uh, Kenna had some auditor auditory issues uh, and they're donating some signage that can be used at that playground for uh, children who will be using it that are similar to Kenna. Uh, I would like to let everyone know that we have made significant progress on the trail development plan uh, by our consultant. Uh, we do expect that that will be completed well in advance of the deadline, probably in June of this year sometime. And of course, we'll, we'll share the findings from council and let you all see the plan once it has been finished. That is for the multi-use trail system throughout the city of Tiffin. Uh, that we're hoping that we can begin to bite off pieces of uh, and create a more healthy community through multi-use uh, trails within the city. Uh, finance renovations at the finance office. The bids are due here at the end of the month for, uh, for that uh, remodel and renovation. Uh, it has been almost 40 years since that office has had any kind of a remodel. Uh, so I know the finance office is very excited for this. Um, and it's just, it's what we have to do here with the city. You know, I, too many times buildings go into disrepair. Governments do not take care of their buildings. I want to say that the city of Tiffin is not that way. We take care of our historic structures here at the city, whether it's tuck pointing, whether it's roofing, whether it is keeping up with remodels and handicap accessibility. We take care of our buildings here because that building to reconstruct something totally from scratch, you're talking millions of dollars. And instead, we're going to spend fractions of that just to, uh, to get it remodeled so that it can survive for the next 40 years and do the prudent thing with our tax dollars. Uh, because of that, the office will be closed uh, beginning sometime in May until the uh, beginning or middle of September. Uh, we timed this, of course, to be done uh, uh, well after tax season wrapped up so that it was not inconveniencing the thousands of individuals that transverse that office. Uh, over the last couple of months, but then also to have things completed before we start the very uh, the very lengthy budget process this fall. Uh, Councilman Jones, if you haven't seen it, the stone base has been installed at Nature Trails Park. Uh, we just need the black top uh, to be laid as well as the playground. But I do want to invite uh, not only Councilman Jones, but all of you to a ribbon cutting uh, that we're going to host uh, for that new park. May the 26th at 4 p.m. Uh, so May 26th, 4 p.m., we will be doing a ribbon cutting uh, ceremony to, to officially kick off the new playground and the remodel of Nature Trails Park in the second ward. So I hope you all can attend that. I also would like to thank David Zach for his years of service at the Tiffin Seneca Economic Partnership. Uh, David, as you all probably have read in the local news media, has, is headed off to Crawford County and Bucyrus. We, of course, wish David nothing but the best in his new endeavors at Crawford County. Uh, and uh, the search will begin here uh, immediately for his replacement in Tiffin and Seneca County. Uh, we all know that we demand nothing but the best in Tiffin and Seneca County when it comes to nearly everything, but especially our economic development, community development, and I have no doubts that we're going to have some very top tier candidates apply for this position and we will make a successful hire so that we do not lose any of our momentum and we'll even take this into yet another gear hire. 
I want to congratulate, congratulate Brittany Trammell and Bat Brad Price on opening Braised in Balance. Uh, that is the new uh, meal prep station that will open at the Chandelier in downtown Tiffin. They're moving here from Fremont, Ohio, because they outgrew the business in Fremont. So they're excited. We're excited. I think downtown Tiffin, the partnership with the Chandelier is just a fantastic fit. So welcome, Brittany and Brad, to the Tiffin community. You're going to find that this is a very special place to call home. I'd also like to congratulate High Life Recovery. That is the new recovery center that is opened uh, here in Tiffin. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting there last week, great turnout. Uh, it's just exciting because as we know, there are many folks in this community across the state of Ohio that struggle with different addictions, drug abuse, et cetera. High Life Recovery helps empower those individuals to get their lives back on track and just and, and better themselves and, and get back integrated into the community. So very happy for this facility to locate in Tiffin um, and, and just excited that they're going to start helping people better their lives, improve their lives and get things back on track. And then last but not least, congratulations to Keebler Shoes, um, ribbon cutting for their new business. They've moved back into downtown Tiffin at what was been known for years as the AAA building on uh, East Market Street. Uh, it's exciting, you know, oldest continuous operating retail store, 190 straight years of operation, uh, one more decade, which I have no doubts they're going to get there, they'll hit 200 years. So we talk about our city's bicentennial and 200th birthday this year, um, and here we are with a business in Tiffin that is just 10 years short of our city's birthday. So um, congratulations to Clinton and Kimberly Wood on that, uh, on that move. The store looks phenomenal. Uh, Tiffinites, get in there, check it out, bring your friends. Uh, it's just great to have such a cool business right here in Tiffin. A couple of events coming up. Uh, tomorrow, Soul Boutique is hosting a block party. So that is tomorrow, April the 19th, downtown Tiffin, 4 p.m. till 7 p.m. They're bringing in food trucks. They've got entertainment. They've got giveaways. Uh, so if you're available 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow evening, uh, the Soul Boutique Boutique Block Party in downtown Tiffin. Uh, this coming Thursday is the first third Thursday of 2022. Uh, that is the Blooming Arts Stroll uh, in downtown Tiffin. Please uh, join us. Got a great evening planned. Thank you to the downtown committee and the volunteers for pulling off that event. We're excited to see what third Thursday brings this year and the rest of the events. Uh, this coming Sunday, April the 24th, is the Earth Day celebration. Uh, the Parks and Rec Park and Recreation Department partners every year with the Franciscan Earth Literacy Center on St. Francis. That event is held at the St. Francis campus at the Franciscan Earth Literacy Center. Begins at 1 p.m. this Saturday, April the 24th. And then last but not least, uh, all of you are invited to the ribbon cutting at Tiffin University for their new Science and Technology Center, which is scheduled for April the 28th at 4 p.m. That is the new building that you see, uh, the new brick building on Miami Street. So the ribbon cutting for the TU Science and Technology Center, April the 28th, 4 p.m. All of you are invited to that. Uh, are there any questions for me before we get into Public Works Annual Report this evening? Yes, Councilwoman Yana to know. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Mayor, I have a comment concern and maybe you've already even thought about it and you don't really need to answer me tonight, but I am so excited about the project at the park and I'm so excited about the fencing going around it. Um, but I have a concern about some parents, people that think if they go there, their dogs can go there. Is there gonna be an issue with dogs in that park? Because I can just see a child running off and a dog chasing them and stuff. I, I think it's a dangerous situation. And, you know, maybe we're going to allow, maybe we're not. It's just something to think about because that's the first thing I thought of when you said the fence was going up. It's like, oh boy, people are going to bring their pets. And this is for kids, not the pets. Certainly. And, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing that to our atten attention. I haven't given it any thought. That's not to say that Bryce and Mason have not. Uh, but we'll be sure to talk with them about that and, and see what they and also the park board uh, come up with as far as a recommendation. Uh, we do allow dogs, I believe, in all of our city parks. Um, so that would require additional signage if that was not to be permitted within that area. Um, but that would be something for the park board and for the park staff to begin to tackle. So we can certainly pass that along to them, Councilwoman. Yeah, because I've been around those children. I have a grandson that's autistic, and that really just kind of scares me a little bit. And I love dogs. You know, I've had dogs all my life. but just a little concerned about that. So I appreciate you thinking about that. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate the insight. Mm -hmm. 
Any other questions, comments? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Not so much a question, a comment. Uh, Mary talked about Nature Trails Park. I got back in Tiffin here this past Friday, and I went down there, I lose track of days, Friday, Saturday, and I was looking over the stone in the uh, oval, if you will, and past Councilman uh, Joe Hartzell came out, and him and I were discussing it. It's been a long time that that park has seen some improvements. So I was pleased, he was pleased, and I'm sure the community is going to be pleased. So thank you about that. We're, we're all thrilled for it. You know, I, I grew up in that area. I grew up on West Davis Street, lived there for probably 20, 21, 22 years of my life. And uh, as a kid, that was always one of the parks that we ride our bikes down to at Nature Trail. So I'm glad as well to see it uh, being rehabbed and, and brought back to life. I think that whole neighborhood's looking forward to it. Any other questions or comments? Well, if not, I'm going to uh, bring Brandon Burner, our superintendent of public works uh, in here. And he should be coming in. And Brandon, you should have the ability to share your screen if you need that. If you don't, let me know. Yeah, I should have the ability here. And let me just kind of get myself situated. Uh, <clears throat> I think we can get her established here. Um, good evening, everybody. Good evening. There we see. You should be able to see that from the start there. Um, Brandon. So, First of all, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to sit in front of you, give my annual report. Um, the team and I are very happy to serve this community, and I'm happy to be here to represent all of their work that uh, that we accomplish. Um, I do speak very quickly, which is sometimes a problem for our uh, electronic devices. Um, so I, I will I will try to uh, be cognizant of that, but I will not get offended if you didn't hear something or need me to recap, please, by all means, uh, stop me and, and let me know. Same thing for questions. Um, you know, if we derail something for a different, for a question, that's a that's, uh, time well spent. Uh, as we move to the next slide here, my agenda, um, we'll, the, much like last year, we'll do a deep dive into what 2021 looked like, and then we'll take some, we'll touch on some notes for what next year uh, and maybe beyond looks like for the public works department. So I showed you this slide last year, primarily the same. Our mission has not changed. Um, the, what you'll see in red there, we have bumped up to seven total on the street maintenance side compared to six last year. We um, started uh, using the seasonals last year and actually maintained one on to full-time full -time staff, which worked well uh, for the department and, and helps us keep stride a lot better. Um, and and let, you'll just get a little chance to uh, to find out how that employee worked, and it was it was a, a great fit. So um, that's exciting news as as we move forward. Um, and, and you know, as I don't know if all of you are familiar with um, what we do at the Public Works, and I know that we've. You know, I bumped this kind of laundry list of things up here uh, last time. Um, this is just my street and sewer. I have another slide of this. Feel free to, to kind of to, to read about, ask questions if you have them, or uh, leave it at that. Um, I'll leave it up here for just a few moments. And then uh, uh, this, like I said, streets and sewers. And then we also have arborists, electricians, and our mechanics. So a little bit of everything. We're a bit of a Swiss army knife um, when it's, um, who does that? Well, if, if it, the answer is we don't know, it's <laughs> shortly after is public works. So uh, interestingly enough, we appreciated uh, what uh, Judy Ryder did for so many years on that, uh, working that shade tree, um, shade tree commission work. And we've actually picked that up as proponents under our arborist uh, position. So it's a good fit for us and we're happy to, to take that on. But again, we do appreciate what she did for us in the in her in her time here. So um, as I move forward, this is gonna be my highlight sheet. I will have a couple of these and I will tell you green is good and red is bad. Uh, the up and down may or may not matter. And and by bad, I mean, it, it does not help my, uh, my time or accomplishment as much. It might not be a bad thing. It might just be more time that I spend. Um, so don't don't read into things one way or the other. Um, and if it does not have a, an arrow there, it doesn't mean that it um, 
you know, it's the first time we ever done it. Maybe I just didn't have the, um, the data from last year, but I wanted to reflect it to you. So as we look at these, you know, right up front, I'm a little, uh, a little bummed. We, uh, our deficit was from generated and completed work orders was, uh, was just over a hundred there it was about 50 last year. However, part of that reason is we've taken on a lot more routine work and accomplish routine work uh, when demand things like, you know, I need this move, I, I have this problem. Um, we've taken the time to establish some priorities for some of that routine work that needs to get done and doesn't become an emergency later. So that's also a good news story too. Um, a, huge, a huge number there is the, um, the increase of street sweeping. So we actually added 50 lane miles into lane miles swept. Um, this will increase substantially this year as well. Uh, we've, we, we do the downtown every month. We've, we try to hit, uh, our state routes on a, on a routine basis and cycle through them. Uh, but this year we will actually hit all of our curb roads twice a year, much like you would plow the street. So we'll do them once in the spring, which we we're well underway in and once in the fall. So looking forward to continuing to bump that number up. Our snow and ice removal went to, uh, it was a lot, lot less than previous years. So you see a lot of green, but it didn't start snowing, you know, heavily until January. None of us were upset about that. So that was a good thing. Uh, leaf bags, interestingly enough, was down about, uh, about 5,000 bags less that we sold. I don't know if people just held on to them from last year or uh, we're, we're watching out for inflation or what, but uh, um we are we are hoping that there's more just more people mulching their mulching their leaves and everything like that and, um, in the community. The trees planted, removed, pruned, and stumps ground is a, a big number. That's because that's all heavy labor. Um, there's some there's, there's these numbers are still fluctuating, and some of these are are in areas where we've we've been pushing back um, woods early last year and a lot of our like trails things like that. So a lot of those removals and prunings are some smaller trees or some saplings that that really um, needed to be taken care of before they were errant trees. Um, but our arborists have established a a regular maintenance program for pruning, uh, and we're incredibly proud of that. So we wanted to highlight that as well. Depending your questions, I'll move on to this following slide for the the second second round of ups and downs. Um, sinkholes, I talked to you about this last year, but the sinkholes down there towards the bottom left, um, I talked to you about that last year, and by golly, I think I told you about eight last year, and we actually killed ten, and they were none of them were fun, and uh, we continue to get more. Uh, but, you know, we, we are doing more permanent repairs than maybe we might have done in the past um, to try to prevent us from having to come back in those. So um, definitely very proud of the guys and, and what they've done to to get these this more lasting maintenance of performed um, sewer replaced. You see 815 linear feet. I will show you a bunch of uh, pictures of that later on a couple slides away. Um, but I am um, incredibly proud of the guys and what they got accomplished this year. You know, that's not just us. We also use contractors and, you know, you saw our ask for, for more money because we had a couple of emergencies that, you know, um, we had to, we had to accomplish and, and we did a little bit more to make sure that it was, we didn't have to dig back in there. Um, but that's, that's a really an incredible amount considering most years prior to this, we were at about a hundred feet uh, on a typical year. So um Finally, I want to point out uh, two more things. The sidewalk three, Mar. I'm sorry. Sidewalks repaired there, middle on the right hand side. Um, that show that looks like it's a bad thing. It's less sidewalks, but I will tell you, my concrete crews and tree crews went out uh, throughout last winter and identified the worst of the worst sidewalk repairs. So what you see here, although it's fewer in square footage, is actually more important, more technical, more difficult, and a much greater benefit um, to our sidewalks uh, throughout town. So I'm proud of the guys for, for taking the time to identify and repair those, those issues. Um, if you look at the asphalt repairs here on the right-hand side towards the bottom, we saved about 15000 uh, bucks simply by doing um, asphalt repairs on ourselves, especially the handwork. Um, we can't save it on doing some of the longer stretches, like what, what Matt manages with the road and bridge levy, uh, does a great job with, but for these hand, the handwork, we, we get, we pay pretty heavily, not unfair prices, but there's a lot of labor involved. Um, and our, our guys have put in the, the elbow grease, um, and saved a heck of a lot of money. And that's, that's reflected even with my, my cost for trucks and personnel, you know, that's a, that's a one-to-one. -one. So, um, Thanks a lot to our guys in, in coming up with that, which we typically didn't do a whole lot of in the past. And then finally, um, crack sealing. You know, as we continue to try to take care of these roads, you know, we're getting a heck of a lot more roads paved through the engineer and those dollars. Um, and as we get those roads put in, we're doing a lot of work to 
make that semi or permanent repairs. And so in this case, a, a semi-permanent like crack ceiling where it keeps the water out for longer. Um, we actually do that on a two, five and nine year cycle. Uh, and so this is actually two more lane miles than last year, uh, which will continue to increase as we continue to pave more. So, uh, but it's worth every every minute and, and dollar we spend on it to get that done. So I will move on to the next, unless there's any questions on the kind of last two slides of ups and downs. None heard. Uh, a couple, a couple of equipment wins. So I appreciate the council's help in, in making that a reality from the from the budget standpoint. Um, I'll talk that mowing equipment a little bit later. That's pretty pretty huge. And if you look at the bottom there on the equipment wins, I talked about dump truck maintenance investment. Um, if you see the gentleman hanging the flower the flower painters there, he's in his harness on the on the bucket loader. That's Damian Cisco. Uh, he came to our team. Um, about a year and a half ago or two years ago, somewhere around there. And with a heck of a lot of experience in diesel maintenance, and he has made our, um, the workhorses of our fleet have been have been humming because of him. And we definitely appreciate it. Money well spent and uh, and thanks to him for, for the work that he does there. Um, I'm gonna move to the next slide here. Um, I, I told you here's that, I told you 815 linear feet, right? More than that, but that's the the ones that we have specific projects for. Um, I will tell you for for those who uh, who had a chance. I don't know if you have an iPhone, but sometimes they'll do their own slideshow for you. Well, my slideshow from my work phone, which is an iPhone, uh, popped up with a bunch of sewer repairs as my like year in highlight, which was the grossest. Uh, it was supposed to be like my kids, you know, playing on the playground. Or, no, not from the work phone. It was a lot of these pictures, but but uh, it's also pretty impressive the amount of work we got done. Um, and like I said, a couple times where we, we reached out to, to contractors to help us out where we couldn't reach, but then we did a heck of, you know, a heck of a lot of labor on the backside. Um, just amazing what we were able to accomplish. Uh, if you look at my next slide here, this is streets, uh, even, even more accomplished here too. Uh, tried some, tried some new things to make some things that weren't necessarily tricks on our bag, uh, before, uh, if you see on the top, on the bottom right there, I'm going to highlight that first, cause that's pretty impressive. Um, we actually put, we talked to you last year about putting a, uh, a concrete base on the road at Birchwood Drive due to the sinking of that road. Um, this is part, part way through. Uh, Mason Gaeta led that crew and did a heck of a job on some of those, some of those j tasks, like using, using the level, things like that on, on around curves and things that we don't typically do. And did a, he did a bang up job uh, along with the rest of the crew working that. So we appreciate that. Um, but uh, you know, all these things that we told you we'd do, the, the one thing I do want to point out I kind of I kind of glossed over it quickly when we talked about new equipment, but we got several new mowers, right? Two new zero turn mowers and one large articulated boom mower. And if you look on that bottom left, like those little purple dots, those are 14 locations for mowing, and that's for our small mowers, right? There's probably another six to seven or more, depending on who hasn't mowed their grass locations that we hit once to twice a week. Uh, and then on top of that, I have about 34 locations for my large mowers, depending on where you are along along areas that don't have sidewalks or at the landfill, things like this, right? Um, because of the equipment that we invested in, we actually gained about 40 plus staff hours every two months. Um, that's a, a full work week for an individual. Uh, that we gain back by just having the right equipment on hand and, and using it properly. So um, that's a testament to to our guys getting out and using the equipment and identifying what equipment we really need to have on hand, um, and then you know letting them flourish with it. So it's it's been amazing. So a couple specialties here: uh, arborist crews. I told you they're working a management cycle. So young tree training and uh, sector pruning, where we're going piece by piece around town. I'm really, really proud of my arborists and, and the way that we're making this a methodical, uh, a methodical program because it's it's easy to look at a tree that needs to be taken down, stop in front of that tree, do everything on that tree. It's easy to get that call because people give us very intense calls about their about their specific tree, and it's tough not to support those um, when you know it's it's really bothering somebody. However, um, we are establishing a path that will allow us to properly manage this forest given the the size of staff that we have, uh, and I'm. I'm proud of them every day for for how they're they're pulling that forward. Um, city electricians have done a heck of a job. Actually, we just finished a, a couple of those unwarranted traffic signal removals just based on some availability to pull poles down. But there's a, a couple spots there in town that have uh, greatly greatly become much more efficient uh, due to their their work and their continuous work on our uh, aerial uh, electrical 
accoutrements, uh, which is awesome. And finally, you know, the, this, uh, I don't know if you can see this kitten on the screen. Um, Brenda Young, my dispatcher, got a call that there was one stuck in a catch basin. Um, but she has a new cat now. Uh, so we got her, we got her saved. It was even more impressive than the fire department, but you just had to be there. So looking at the uh, way ahead, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot that we're doing with technology. I don't know, Matt Watson probably mentioned it in the past uh, in his brief. And, you know, we, we're really looking at leveraging um, GIS software and at looking at some of our, some of our experts around here and, and allowing them to, um, push that technology forward to work for us. And, and right now we're at that, that happy medium um, that we're finding where, um, you know, even faster than what I had expected, where we just have, have grabbed onto some of those, the tools that just needed to be made available to us and have, and have made, a, made, them, made them work very, very well. So um, we wanna to continue to do the routine things routinely. And that's where, you know, some of these systems that we've started or built from scratch will, will uh, we're, we're shaping into something that's going to be even more longstanding for us. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and seeing some of these things, you know, and for instance, and what, what I'll tell you is, like, for instance, our snow plowing, we remarked that, you know, we started actually plowing regularly in about January is when the snow started falling regularly like it would normally in December. And, it, and in about February, after several snows, uh, we all kind of looked around at each other like, what, why aren't the plows breaking, <laughs> right? We, you know, typically you have a, sh like the shoes that hold the plows um, or the, the mold boards along the bottom will, will be broken or pulled or whatever because you're running into manholes, you're running into um, places where the pavement's not, not quite set right or you're catching curbs that are, that are buck teeth. I'm not saying that those areas don't still exist, but I'm telling you that they are far less. Part of that's really the, like the road and bridge levy and the funds that we put into the roads in some of the worst areas first, right? That, doing it by priority. And the other part is all the work that my team does day in, day out to adjust our manholes, adjust our catch basins, make sure that those, those items are, are where they need to be. So um, it has second and third order effects uh, both for us and for our residences at large. So um, with that, I'd just like to hit a couple more special thanks before I open it up to remaining questions. Um, you can read some of these here, but again, I, I talked once about Judy Ryder. Again, she did so much for our department that uh, we didn't realize until it was about time for her to leave. And, you know, that's a, that's a tough, a tough way to say goodbye, but I, I, you know, I can't say thank you enough to her. Um, also, uh, Jason Windsor, who was an acting police chief for quite a while, uh, you know, he was a great target. And so we kind of miss having somebody to make fun of, you know, now we have Dave Pauly in there, but you, you win some, you lose some. And also to his dispatchers who get to call me at about, you know, 3 a.m. is usually is kind of the typical with some really, really good news. Um, you know, I, I, as much as they, they take and they have to do that, I definitely appreciate, um, what they do for us and what they do for the city, getting those messages to the right people at the right time, even if it's not the most fun to call somebody at that time in the morning. So um, other than that, you know, to the Tiffin residents, thank you so much for, for, um, for what you do, especially those of you, I mean, we come across residents who are not always having the best day. Uh, we work with sewers and we work with streets and sometimes those aren't affecting you in the, in the best way. And, and for the folks who, especially the folks who can come out there and still say thank you and show us uh show us appreciation. We, we appreciate you too. Um, and finally to my crew again, like I can't say enough about, about how well they work and, you know, I've been pushing them hard and we're at the point now where they're pushing me hard too, to get, uh, to keep it moving forward. So with that, uh, I will open it up to any questions from the group. Brandon, I just want to thank you for, uh, the job well done out there, that department. It's, it's been a well-oiled machine for some time, but you've really just taken it up another notch out there with what you've been able to do with your leadership and, and the accomplishments. And it's just incredible the amount of man hours that you're saving with having the right equipment at the right place and having the people trained. And it, you guys are just doing great things out at Public Works. So I'm very appreciative of that. I know we say it in closed meetings, but we need to say it publicly as well that you all just do a phenomenal job out there at the street department. So. Thank you, and uh, um, I guess we can turn it over to council if they have any questions. You may have to, Brandon, exit though your screen share so that uh, the council president can see her council members to call on. There you go. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, yes, Councilman Jones. Thank you, Madam President. 
And thank you, Mr. Berner, for this uh, update, which is great. But And you don't have to do it now, but I want to get with you because I have an expert in the second ward who knows how to maintain alleys. And he keeps talking about dirty 57 stone and clean 57s. And I wouldn't know a 57 from a 56. So someday down the road, I'll get with you. You can educate me on that. And more important, trees removed, 198 divided by 52 weeks. That's four a week. That is time consuming. That is a huge undertaking. And then stumps ground, 110, 52, do the math, two a week. That just sounds like a heck of a lot of time involved in doing that. So you must be doing a good job. So I'll stand down. Thanks, Councilman Jones. Yeah, and uh, that's the arborist crew primarily working those 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 stumps are incredibly painful, and a lot of those tree cuttings. You know, that's one metric we want to see is to match our plantings and our removals, right? We're not there right now because a lot of those removals, like I said, are a lot of a heck of a lot of saplings that need to be taken down and getting out of the way before they become problems. Um, so as we look in years years ahead, we're we're trying to match those plantings and and removals um, and the stumps ground. Yes, that's that is incredibly impressive the amount of those work those guys did to get that out. Uh, Councilman Perkins. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had nothing but uh, good things to say about your department. We called down there for an issue down here on Morningside Drive with some curbs. Uh, looked like they were coming out of the ground, uh, probably six or eight inches in a couple spots. And within a week, they were down here, ripped them out, replaced everything and fixed it. And it looks fantastic. So I really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Does anyone else have any anything for Brandon? Yes, Councilwoman Yanazuna. First of all, Mr. Burner, I always appreciate your quick response anytime I have a question or need things done. And there's one that's it's really kind of a dirty job that I didn't know you did until the last year or two. Um, at one point, we had this really big dead skunk out on Miami Street. And I'm like, what the heck do we do with that? And all of a sudden, your guys came by and picked it up. I'm like, wonderful. So last year, there was this big, unfortunately, this big, huge dead cat in the road and my husband and I are looking at each other what the heck are we going to do with this thing do you put it in your garbage what do you do and I'm like well you know public works picked it up before I'm going to call them and you guys came right like 10 15 minutes later came and got that thing because I don't know what I would have done with it and, and so that's just one unsung thing you guys do that I really did appreciate because I had no idea what to do with it so thank you even for that yes ma'am Fortunately, I have not experienced the dead animals uh, interactions, but um, I, I, I echo Councilwoman Yanatuno's uh, qu quick response anytime that I contact you guys. You guys have always been right on it, whether it's, hey, this is when we're going to take care of it, or uh, you guys just take care of it right away. So really appreciate that. Um, does anyone else have anything for Brandon? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we, we talked about the dispatches for the fire department, uh, police department, et cetera, et cetera. And Mr. Burr mentioned Brenda. Brenda is a dispatcher, in my opinion, at Miami Street. And she meets my three P's of profession or customer service. She's polite, professional, and patient. So I just want to give a pat in the back to Brenda, the dispatcher, maybe that's not her title, but she does a fine job on Miami Street. She is, in fact, a dispatcher, Councilman Jones, and for sure, you're 100%. Awesome. Okay. Well, if nothing else, thank you, Brandon. Mayor, anything else from you? No, Madam President. My report is concluded, unless there are any additional questions. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, moving into uh, the next report, Clerk of Council and Forest. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director of Finance, Kathy Kaufman. No report, Madam President. Awesome, thank you. And Director of Law, Brent T. Howard. No report, Madam President. Okay, thank you. Uh, that takes us into written communications. Thank you. We have finance director's request for legislation number F22-14 to amend the 2022 budget ordinance 21-105 to appropriate funds into the park budget. 
finance director's request for legislation number F22-14 has been prepared for tonight's meeting as ordinance 22-36. And we have a notice of a stock ownership change at Reno's Pizza and Pasta um, from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Um, this will be forwarded to the street sidewalks and sewers committee, Councilman Perkins. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, you are back on mute randomly again. Sorry. <laughs> Discuss this with the committee and we are in agreement that this can be signed and returned. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, with no opposition, this will be held on file in the clerk's office with no opposition. Uh, that takes us into oral communications. Anyone wishing to address council may raise their hand via Zoom and uh, direct their questions to the council president. Looks like we have one Madam, already. Yeah, Madam President, you have a hand. Uh, Brace Riggs, so bring him in. Yay. Good afternoon, Council Madam President and Council Members. My name is Bryce Riggs. I'm just speaking on behalf of the Citizens for Tiffin, the committee that advocates for the passage of the Road and Bridge Levy. It seemed like it was yesterday that I was here speaking to Council Members about how important this Road and Bridge Levy was for our community uh, in the short time that it's been passed. And we, we can all see firsthand the amount of increase in orange barrels and road work that's been done. But I just want to get on Council real quick and explain a few things just for the public about uh, different aspects of it. So the first is obviously ballot language. You'll see the ballot lang language and uh, when you get the ballot, early voting has started. And then the uh, the primary is May 3rd. The proposed municipal income tax uh, is how it states and reads on the uh, ballot language. Note that it does say proposed municipal income tax for the city of Tiffin, but this is actually a continuation of existing uh, road and bridge levy that's already in, in place. I had to read like that from a legal standpoint. Uh, we've had many community members and the, the community has been very busy out uh, advocating for the passage of the road and bridge levy. Uh, we've received really honestly just all positive feedback about the work that the city of Tiffin has done with these dollars. But just wanted to remind folks that since the passage of the levy uh, in 2018, the city's leveraged these funds for over $5 million in state and federal grant funding dollars. I think we could all, uh, Many communities around the state of Ohio and other uh, states advocate obviously for uh, additional road dollars and infrastructure dollars, but it's really you know, have, have the money in hand to go after these projects and know that these, these projects are gonna get completed. They just needed uh, some state uh, national funding to get the work done. Additionally, um, road funding has been increased significantly since the passage. So average spend uh, prior was about $350,000. Uh, and, and since 2019, it's been increased about $3.2 million plus. And so I just really want to advocate how important this is, not only for just our community's infrastructure, but also other departments who depend on this, because you should know that, you know, this used to eat away at the um, capital budget and wouldn't allow for long-term projects and other projects to get funded, but these dollars are now being used for uh, just road and bridge dollars. So I just want to jump on here and just remind folks uh, that is on the ballot and how important it is for the city of Tiffin in the future. Uh, I, I I've told people, uh, trust the process and obviously trust the administration. I think, you know, folks who have watched council have seen Brandon, have seen Matt Watson, have seen Dale, Aaron, and others talk about, you know, the plan in place and just trust the process. Uh, this isn't going to get turned around overnight. It's been significantly over underfunded for a number of years. And so allowing these dollars to really play out and um, Brandon talked about, you know, the areas that are most needed. There are a lot of areas that need work, uh, but the city of Tiffin knows that, and they're using these dollars and leveraging uh, state and federal dollars to, to do more with less. So just wanted to uh, speak a little more on how important this is, and I'd open up for any questions. We've been at, hitting the, hitting the uh, streets. Uh, Matt Watson and I know Brent Howard have been out. We've been doing some stuff on social media. We have a website, citizensfortiffin.com. We've had, uh, I think, a couple of different uh, letters in the Advertise Tribune, Second News Daily. And as well as uh, a story in the Advertise Review in the last week about uh, how important this is. So I'll open up there. Are there any questions about the levy? Thank you, Bryce. Does anyone have any questions for Bryce? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay. 
Thank you, Bryce. Appreciate it. Okay, if there are anyone else uh, from the public who wishes to address council, please click the button on your screen that says raise hand uh, and we can bring you in now. I'm not seeing any hands, Madam President. There was someone that uh, was going to speak, I thought, this evening, but I don't see the hand up. And I hate to just bring someone in without them knowing <laughs> that they're being brought in either. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's, let's move in uh, to motions. Um, Oh, oh we got we there we go. Yep. Okay. Okay. I will bring Mr. Kerian in. Okay. Sometimes that button moves around too. I, I know if you're on a different device, sometimes at the top of the screen, sometimes at the bottom of the screen, other times you have to click the more button to even get to it. So it probably took a little <laughs> bit of time. So no worries. Is he on his way in. There we go. And you'll just have to unmute yourself, uh, Mr. Kirian, and uh, then we should be able to hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. Am I unmuted for you? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Well, thank you all very much for giving me this opportunity. Um, basically, um, I don't know if. Uh, the mayor or anybody has been apprised of I've been uh, talking to Nick, who's been a, a wonderful uh, uh, support um, uh, and what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, I first of all, I, I'll be brief. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I give you a little quick, real quick bio. I am a uh, stage four colorectal cancer survivor. Um, but I'm not here to talk about myself. Uh, I'm 65 months cancer-free. Um, uh, um, was basically, um, oh, kind of uh, became immersed in pediatric uh, cancer uh, advocacy. Oh, it's going on about 44 months now, right in there, and um as of last year i was the one that uh submitted um, the um county commissioners to uh like the courthouse keep low uh gold for the last day of september which they willingly obliged um which i appreciate a great deal um i also absolutely was very grateful to see Merrimont's um, last September, recognized September as Pediatric Cancer, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, now, basically, I don't want you to think I'm going to come at you every month because there are, there are 12 um, major types of childhood cancer. However, um, the reason that Go Gray in May is so special to me and and a lot of us in the child uh, cancer uh, army, so to speak, basically, um, although leukemia, ALL, acute lymphonic leukemia, is the number one diagnosis, um, childhood brain cancer is by far, in a way, the number one cause of death in pediatric cancer. And um, I can give you numbers all day long. I, I'm what I have, um, I don't even have my notes in front of me quite honestly, but I don't need them. <laughs> um, basically, uh, you've got four major types. You've got um, glioblastoma, neuroblastoma, medulloblastoma, and then you've got DIPG, which is um, unfortunately uh, a no-win situation, basically for children. Uh, uh, it, basically, depending on 
what site you go on, you're looking at a 0.3 to 0.6 percent chance of making it five years. It's a, it's a type of cancer that starts in the ponds of of your brainstem, and what happens is this this massive tumor um, in, instead of like staying together where where a surgery is possible to remove this tumor it separates and it, and it kind of perforates which um i can appreciate that because that's what happened to me only mine was in my colon and in my, my large intestine however um basically um what we're looking at uh right now in in our country worldwide but uh, i try to concentrate on, on united states statistics um we're looking at uh well in a late grade uh any late grade stage brain cancer you're looking at between 0 0.4 to 2.7 percent survival rate um what I'm trying to do is, you know, basically is just to raise and broaden the the awareness. And in my um, personal opinion, um, and not like I said, I appreciate what was done last year so much. Um, Seneca County, um, unfortunately, with my research, we're lacking behind in. in um, as far as membership, as far as uh, oh, um, and all of the uh, awareness advocacy um, groups that are recognized, uh, and I belong to probably about thirty-one of them, I think, last last count. Um, um, out of eighty-eight counties, I. I think I've seen our membership at about number 77. Um, I would like to increase that. And uh, this is a step that I'm, I'm trying to take uh, in that direction. Um, um, I don't know if anybody has been in touch with Mr. Kuhn, but I do have a also, um, Bryce has been wonderful. I have a event for July 4th for a fundraiser and I'm probably going to be coming at the mayor one more time this year in September. Um, so um, basically, I, I don't want to keep you, and, I, and uh, there's really no sense in dragging this on. If uh, the city government feels like it's worthy, I would be so very grateful. If not, then um i will still support you 110 percent um i i believe in this administration uh you've got my complete undivided support and attention and that's really all i have um for you folks this evening i really do appreciate your time and uh, your attention thank you thank you mr Kerryan. um really appreciate your your, um, the, all the information that you provided this evening. Um, <clears throat> um, Mayor, is there, is there a specific request here? I'm, and I apologize if I missed it. Um, I just wanna make sure that we, we take care of anything that we need to. Yeah, Mr. Kirian, um, what? How can we specifically help you? What would you? I mean, obviously, a proclamation, uh, maybe the courthouse lit. What else can we do to to assist well, uh, you this cause? Well, Mr. Mayor, um, the courthouse—that um, is something I will petition um, the county for in September. Um, what I'm asking for in May. Um, it's uh, basically a proclamation it, uh, that May is recognized nationally in this country as child cancer awareness, a uh, brain cancer, uh, child cancer awareness month. Um, uh, just like you, you last year, you recognized September as you, you declared a proclamation uh, for uh, child cancer awareness. Now, that's a broad spectrum, 
as I said, each month has its own. But I'm like I, I'd have no intention of of sure uh, because there's there's one for um, leukemia, there's one for scar sarcomas, um, all your bone marrow. There's it goes on and on. Um, the reason that uh, brain cancer that I that I'm asking for this is because it is the number one uh, cause of death in children, and as far as um, in pediatric cancer. So I feel like um, I would just like to broaden the public's um, awareness on that. Um, sure. However, um, as I said, uh, I, this is just something that I wanted to bring in front of the council and in front of the mayor and in front of you know everybody and yeah. the city government and in whole and. And, and and see where you stand, you know. Um, yeah, right. Mr. Kieran, we 100%, we, we want to help you get the word out. So I yeah. consider it done. We'll do a proclamation and, and get that on social media and whatever else we can do to assist. We will uh, we'll help you with it, especially, you know, it's, it's definitely close to all of us. We've all known some some youth in the community that we've helped over the years that has struggled with with uh, with a brain tumor or cancer or something. So we're, we're happy to assist you with that. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be a wonderful. That'd be great, Mr. Mayor. And um, what you just mentioned, I think, is very important because I have failed in my attempts. Um, I've been shut down, kind of, uh, as far as social media getting the word out. So, if I could please have a little bit of support there, um, as far as um, uh, you know, local media, um, that would be great. Yeah, we, we will happily help you with that. We'll be in touch about it, okay? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Carrion. Have a Thank great Thank you, Mr. Carrion. Thank you all. Good night. Okay, Mayor, is there anyone else wishing to address council? Um, I don't, it does not appear so. No more hands, okay. Madam President. Awesome, thank you. All right, we will move into motions. Are there any motions this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will move into resolutions and ordinances. Thank you, Madam President. We have resolution number 22-13, introduced by Steve Leppard. Resolution accepting the recommendation of the Tax Incentive Review Council to continue certain tax incentive agreements with local businesses and property owners and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of resolution 22-13. Resolution number 22-14, introduced by Dan Perry. Resolution approving mayor's appointment of Scott D. Herneman to serve a four-year term on the Civil Service Commission from the effective date of this resolution until December 31st, 2025. This is the first reading of resolution 22-14. Councilman Perry. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to ask for passage of 22-14. Uh, There's a motion to pass resolution 22-14. Is there a second, Councilman Gillig? I'd like to second the motion, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Oh, Councilman Gillig. If I may, just very briefly, I've just been so impressed with uh, Mr. Horniman and his communication with City Council, and I believe it'll be an excellent addition um, to this commission. Awesome. Thank you. Um, if there's no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the vote on the passage. Council Member Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perkins? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Resolution 22 14 passes with a vote of 6 to 0. Resolution number 22-15, introduced by Steve Leppard. Resolution agreeing to cooperate with the Seneca County Park District for the purpose of providing park improvements and authorizing the Park and Recreation Director and Mayor to sign a grant application and related documents and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading of Resolution 22-15. Councilman Leppard. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I would ask for... Uh, City Council suspension of the three reading rule and immediate passage resolution number 22 15. 
Thank you. There's a motion to suspend resolution 22-15. Is there a second? Uh, Councilwoman Yano to know. I'll second, Madam President. Okay, there's a motion and a second for suspension. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I think the mayor described this very well earlier in his report, and uh, uh, this is a time-sensitive request, and uh, it's the reason for the suspension. Thank you, Councilman Leopard. If there's no further discussion, uh, we will first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Gillick. Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perkins? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of six to zero. We will now vote on the emergency. Council Member Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. <clears throat> Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perkins? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of six to zero. We will now vote on the passage. Council Member Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perkins? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Resolution 22-15 passes with a vote of six to zero. Ordinance number 22-34, introduced by Zach Perkins. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept an easement for sanitary sewer purposes from AAI Leasing LLC on four parcels of land off of Elwood and Davis Streets and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading of ordinance 22-34. Ordinance number 22-35 introduced by Zach Perkins. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept an easement for sanitary sewer and stormwater drainage purposes from R&L Zeiss Family Partnership 3 Limited on land on Euclid Avenue and declaring an emergency. First reading of ordinance 22-35. Ordinance number 22-36, introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending 2022 budget ordinance 21-105 to appropriate $2,371 into the park and recreation budget. This is the first reading of ordinance 22-36. And that concludes the legislation, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, we are now under other business. Um, one of the items I'd like to raise in other business is regarding our next meeting and how that will be held. Um, we have discussed this in committee of the whole, um, but we will need to vote on whether we would like for this meeting to be uh, via Zoom or in person as Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, the uh, City Council meeting on May the 2nd uh, I would propose that that be a Zoom meeting. Thank you. There's a, is that a motion? That is. Okay. There's a motion for the May 2nd, 2022 uh, Tiffin City Council meeting to be held via Zoom. Is there a second? Uh, Councilman Perkins. I'd like to second motion, Madam President. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I'm not sure I want to do it, but I was hoping someone would explain to the public, since we're talking about a Zoom meeting, the 1st of May, the reasons for it. Yeah, I'm happy to, I'm happy to explain it. Um, I think that there's, there's been, <clears throat> there's been a, a number of council members due to various reasons, whether it's medical or work related that are unable to attend in person the past few council meetings and due to this and to ensure that we have quorum um, and given the capability that we have via Zoom through the 1st of June, um, it is council's, um, council has proposed to, um, to have the next meeting via Zoom. Okay, thank you, Madam President, because many of us have expressed we would rather do it face-to-face -face and live and at city chambers, but thank you for that explanation. Absolutely. Yes, it's definitely our desire to prefer in, in person meetings, but uh, we we would like to ensure that we have we have quorum and as many council members as possible. Uh, Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, being one of the council members uh, unable to attend as much as as 
the citizens of Tiffin have certainly deserved. Why, why do we need to meet in person on the 16th? I'm, I feel like I'm out of loop, out of the loop on that one. <clears throat> Is that something I can discuss later on with someone? Um, uh, you want me to yeah. answer that, ma'am? Yes. Please? Yes. Please. Um, so, as council requested some months ago, uh, the city of Tiffin uh, is getting outside legal counsel for the matter uh, uh, revolving around the municipal court and the situation with the judge uh, and, uh, or excuse me, the suspended uh, Mark Rep. Um, that will be an executive session on the 16th uh, per council's request uh, with the attorney uh, that the city hired uh, on, on, uh, at your request to move forward uh, with that discussion. And we prefer it to be in person. Uh, it can be done over Zoom, but it's much more difficult uh, to have that conversation uh, on Zoom. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other discussion? Yeah, yes, a law director. Yes, just to, to clarify that uh, the law currently allows for the uh, Zoom electronic meetings through the <clears throat> end of June. And not that you have to do that, but it allows it through June 30th, not June 1st. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you correcting me. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on this motion. Councilmember Gillig? Yes. Yana Tuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perkins? Yes. And Parrot. Yes. Motion passes with a vote of six to zero. Is there any other business for council, Councilwoman Yanatuno? Thank you, Madam President. Just on a, a fun side note, as we're doing another Zoom meeting, I keep noticing how my, when we do the pledge, my hand is looking like the wrong direction. I want to assure people my heart is in the correct spot. <laughs> it's just for some reason, my camera shows it opposite everybody else on the screen. So I didn't want them to think I was different in other ways as we keep doing Zoom. So just Thank wanted to you. point that out. Appreciate the confirmation of that. <laughs> uh, Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Madam President. If I may share just a brief story, uh, would like to express my appreciation to the Tiffin Fire and Rescue Division. Uh, unfortunately, I have had to take two rides via ambulance, uh, one in February and then another uh, just recently. And I've been very scared both times, but the care and professionalism I received has just been off the charts and, I, and I'm so grateful. Um, you know, I'll, I'll share with you, my blood pressure was 188 over 122 and it got very scary, but you know, all the, all the good folks at the, at the fire station, um, were able to, you know, reassure me that everything was going to be okay. And I just, I knew that I was in the hands of, of some outstanding professionals. Um, so I just wanted to, just wanted to comment on that, how grateful I am for, for their care and support. Oh, that's always great to hear and glad to have you, have you back. Um, any other business to come before council? Okay. Seeing none, we can adjourn. Thank you, everyone, and have a great evening. See you guys.